Dr. Ishang, thank you for introducing me in such a uh, generous manner. I do not know whether to take that generosity kindly. <laughs> it is true that I have interacted with Dr. Ishang for a while within the professional circles. He was my boss as our chair of a uh, professional East Africa Professional Association of Kenya, or the Professional Organization of Kenya, when I served at the ISK. I'm a member of the ISK, that is the Institution of Surveyors of Kenya. And this afternoon, I think, with a lot of uh, thanks for the organizers and humility for inviting us to talk to you about land and natural resources. We are going to the business of what we do best when we are in the world of antelopes. We never talk much about what we know when we are with the giants, the principles and the VCs of this world. But I think out there we have made a little impact within the professional circles in as far as coming up with a lot policy and the chapter five that deals with the large issues in this country. We've been doing this work as a team under the RRI program. So whatever is, I'm going to say today is not just my thoughts. Uh, we have got uh, some team members. We have another Winnie from the School of Law. We have got uh, the Dean of Law, Patricia. We have our very own Dr. Ishangi and Dr. Robert Kibui, still from the School of Law. Why is it important for us to talk about land and natural resources this afternoon? This is not just because this is where we earn our living from, being in the College of Architecture and Engineering, but I think as Kenyans, if there is anything that preoccupies us, it is land. Am I correct? or well, even for the young ones, the students. They are also preoccupied with that. Okay, good to know. I think we, we, we really preoccupy ourselves with land and natural resources and what we own and what we shall own and what we ever owned more than we think about our souls and our eternal life. At least for me, that's a confession. I never worry about my future much. I worry about lard <laughs> and how much maybe I, I, I got from my ancestors and how much I will leave for my descendants, if I have any. So therefore, it is timely for us to think about, about this resource, lard it, it, itself. Every aspect of our lives really revolves around it. We echo our living from it. On the ground that we are studying, on the space that we are in, we are thinking about that in one way or the other. This morning when I was listening to the news at 11 o'clock as I came, there's somebody who was talking uh, with the permission of Jaoko, one of your witnesses when you're in TJRC and the ICC. I think they were, he, he, she was giving the evidence and he was explaining about, or she was explaining, he, she was explaining about how the meetings discussed large matters. And I almost asked myself, really, was that that critical? Do you think, therefore, it is at the center of everything that we think about? It is. And to a big extent, Kenyans, we can identify with the issues that we've gone through as far as that is concerned. We also, we therefore find that any speaker talking about that talks about it as an emotive issue. Emotive because it entangles our emotions, our spirit, our soul, our mind. And it is therefore difficult for us not to get really involved at whatever level that we are in. We think about their follow from many perspectives and the role it plays is obvious. It's an economic resource 
We use it for economic livelihoods. We want to use land and natural resources as collateral when we own the land. We also look at it as a finite resource, that which cannot be destroyed. And I think, for me, I look at land, my relationship with land, <coughs> as that relationship that I may have with my partner. You know, when you walk down the aisle, those that have the advantage and the privilege of ever walking down the aisles, you say, to have and to hold. Okay? Isn't that so? But how long can you hold? For that, for me, it is to have and to hold until... <laughs> no, not until I... Dr. Mary my boss says until I sell it. For me, I'm a land economist, I don't sell. Isn't that so? Yes, those of us in real estate, we don't sell. We accumulate. Because <laughs> we see it as a tool for empowerment. Correct. Probably, if you are lucky, I could transfer some of those rights to you. If you have the privilege of being one of my descendants. Okay? We also have got a very social and cultural intimate relationship with the large. No wonder a lot of us, and I use this time and again and say, even when you have these mansions in the cities, Okay, and these huge vehicles that you have, those of you who are from the College of Architecture and Engineering, you are famed for that. Okay, the mighty vehicles. Okay, why is it that every Friday or Saturday we see you driving to your rural areas? Why are you so bothered about what you call the ancestral land? Because you have got an intimate relationship with this resource and particularly that which you got from your parents, your grandparents, that one you want to have and to, and to hold. So therefore, what does this say, Tabitha? There's something else that is blocking me here. Cancel or escape? I deal with land, I don't deal with technology. <laughs> okay? So basically then, that is why we are here. For us to share and get to understand why it is that land found its way in the Constitution amongst the very first chapters. I think it is the realization of the role that it plays. And as rightfully uh, Dr. Ishangi puts it, all the lesser aspects of this, of governance, leaders who are servants, they come after, after chapter 5. Is that so? So it therefore means the Constitution does recognize the importance that land plays in our lives and protects it as such. We look at land therefore not as just that commodity that you have, but in terms of the rights and interests which must be protected in law, which must be protected in policy, and institutional frameworks have to be put in place so that land is governed in a good way. <coughs> what have been the issues as far as this land is concerned? A few have been put there for, for us to give our minds. But the question is not that it is not that we don't know the problems that we have had as, large, as far as LAD is concerned. Looking at the slides on the screen, or the points and the bullets there on the slide, I have put just something for our thoughts. If there are matters of dispossession, if there are matters of unlawful acquisition of LAD, if there are matters of inequity, particularly on those communities or groups within our <coughs> country that we call the marginalized groups. Women have been marginalized. Okay, I don't know to what extent. What about the political, politically instigated clashes? Okay. And as everybody seeking services within the large offices, 
I think at one time or the other, you have had to face the difficult, difficult issues that pertains to access to life services within this country. So as a Kenyan, as somebody who is at the University of Nairobi, the question that comes to mind is, have you been affected by any of these problems that we are talking about? Issues that directly touch us in one way or the other, as far as blood is concerned. And you know of the mechanisms that exist, or you are just seated there and hoping things will just come your way. That is why we are studying here not just to educate you about blood in chapter 5, but to tell you, you need to take the bull by the horns. You need to know it for yourself. What are your rights as far as access land ownership is concerned? What does the Constitution say as far as the management of the land resources in this country is concerned? And suppose you are aggrieved by some of the aspects that we have raised here. Where do you seek redress as far as land and environmental matters and natural resources are concerned. We shall tell you just a bit. Now, from across, um, Dr. Shandi, this is a meeting for the College of Architecture and Engineering. You kept on talking about engineers, like us, we come second. We don't come second, we come first. So I think it is the College of Architecture first that admits the cream, the, the cream, if you want, yeah? principal notes. And then the engineers, so here we are talking about the surveyors and the engineers and the architects. Okay? What is that? We are not going to labor on that. Article 260 of the Constitution, and I want you to note and go and open, it gives us what is that. It tries to define the classification, the categories, of what can be said to be land. But in the simplest of the terms, the surface of the earth and all the permanent fixtures, that is what we call land. The waters that cover the land, or the land that is covered by the water, the sea, the oceans, the high water marks, okay? All that is part of land. And Dr. Shangi, you come after me shortly to talk about the natural resources. But for us, we really do not uh, preoccupy ourselves with the space. But those rights and interests that you hold, that is why we ask you, even if you have the space, how do you prove that space is yours? Okay? You have to know that what you own are those rights and interests. You have to know how to regularize your land rights. You don't just sit like a man. You don't just sit like a villager, saying, yes, I bought this plot, I know it is mine. <coughs> what about when the time of reckoning comes? How will you prove it is yours? Those rights and interests are basically what we call land. And those rights are what will allow you to access that land, to use it, okay, to own it, even to pass it on or to transmit from one person to the other. So look at Article 260, giving us the definition for land. And with the Constitution, our argument here, our observation here, is that after the struggle towards a new land dispensation, where we had the push and the struggle for the land policy formulation between 2004 to 2009, a new era, a new dawn has been birthed as far as land is concerned. There are various aspects that are fundamental that we should appreciate, yes, that we are moving on very well as a country. Areas that had previously been ignored, but which were the causes of the malpractices that we have just observed. So the Constitution attempts, obviously, to deal with some of those historical injustices, exclusions, inequities, amongst others. And when you look at now chapter five, we have picked about five areas which we would want to bring to your attention. The principles under which land will be managed in this country, 
and administered. Article 60 in Chapter 5, the manner in which land will be held, used, and managed will be under the following principles. Equity, okay? Security of land rights, elimination of gender discrimination. And those of us who sit in my class, I'm sure they know that I like that very much, okay? That there will be no gender discrimination as far as what? Land, access to land is concerned. And the other day I was telling somebody, I have, I have attempted to take my father to court. Because now I have told him, it is not going to be business as, as usual. I am also a son like those sons. Because this constitution says, elimination of gender discrimination. Okay? In as far as access to ownership, transmission of those land rights. So every one of you has, has, got, has got equal rights. The other very important thing is that people have been settling scores as far as land issues are concerned in very rudimentary practices. Slashing each other here and there, maiming each other. The constitution puts it at one of the principles to be that it encourages settling land related disputes using what we call alternative dispute resolution mechanisms. So that now in every county, the National Land Commission is constitu constituting the county land management boards. Below that, we shall have structures where all the way to the village, you have got recognized village institutions where alternative dispute resolution mechanisms are put in place. So that now, the slashing of each other might, might be a thing of the past. The other very important thing, as far as the changes brought about to envisage by our constitution, is the ownership of land. It is vested in you and me. And again, to quote Ichagi, he says, it is vested, land is vested in Professor Wajiko, Professor who? From Kabire, okay? Wajiko Kabira, I think, starts for the ordinary. I wonder how Professor Wajiko is ordinary. It therefore means you are not going to own land, or nobody has got an exclusive right to own land at the exclusion of everyone else. Land belongs to the people of Kenya collectively as a nation, and that I would want us to put it in our minds as communities and as individuals. So where do individual, come, individual rights come? Third, okay? As a nation, as communities, as individuals. The communal interest, the public interest, therefore override any private interest that we may have as far as blood is concerned. Article 62 gives you the categories of blood where we have got public blood very well stipulated what is public land, which will be managed and administered by the National Land Commission on behalf of the national government and the county government. And with that Article 62, the, the, the category 63, you find the community land also defined, and C, private what? Private land under Article 64. And under private land, you are supposed to hold it in either freehold manner, for labor to have and to hold, it is yours, or leasehold manner, the contract will come to an end one day. We call it the term of years. So you own it for a period under certain conditions, and you have to revert to whoever it is that gave it to you. What we also need to observe is that at the private land ownership category, we are still, whether it is freehold or leasehold, you are still subject to what we call the state policing power. You cannot use it and abuse it as you wish because you are subject to certain regulations, planning regulations amongst others. Again, the power of eminent domain the state has got the right to compulsory report, take away your interests, 
and again as value as we say, but with prompt, fair and just what? Compensation. For those of you who have got uh, pieces of blood, which you have regularized, might be you may want in the evening to go and check under what tenure your lab rates are. Because sometimes we have got these papers we keep in our briefcases, we keep in our cars, those of us who like who come from areas where you travel with all your documents. Okay, your titles, you travel with all of them. So that <laughs> you are not separated from your lab rates. <laughs> You might want to go and check how many, if, if your interests are leasehold, how many more years you have before this contract becomes to an end. If you have been given 99, uh -huh, maybe 60 are already gone. Next time I'll tell you what to do because I'm a large uh, management consultant, that's why I earn my money, not for the university. Okay? <laughs> I will tell you what to do as far as application for extension of the lease is concerned. For those of you who have the freehold titles, you may not have to do what? To worry much, because it is holding in perpetuity. The term does not expire. Still, there are conditions that are leasehold titles. See whether you pay your rates to the local authority and whether you pay your land rent annually to the national government or to the Commission of Lands. The other important thing about the constitution and land is in terms of lot ownership and sizes. And for the first time, we see a situation where those that are non-citizens are not allowed to own our land for more than 99, 99 years. Okay, previously we had multi, multinationals, um, outsiders, owning our land for 999 years, freehold interests, and within my research, I have not seen many other places where people are allowed to own land in that manner. You come from wherever you come and we give you all our land. Okay? To all have it as long as you live. So Parliament, again, is supposed to enact legislation to ensure that we have minimum and maximum votes. Mix, ma minimum and maximum holdings. That is not to say that when you want to purchase, you will not be allowed. You will be allowed. But we are saying to ensure productivity and good returns, there are areas where controls must be put in place. You cannot keep on subdividing and breaking it and breaking it. Minimum blood sizes. Because that would mean that we are not having sustainable management of our large resources. The Constitution seeks again to promote gender equality and with particular emphasis in Article 60 and 68C, protection of interests of spouses in matrimonial properties. Again, this is music to the ears to some of us, okay? Particularly those uh, who are in the, the second gender, as men like putting it. Yes, that you cannot just be ejected like that. The law protects you. I would refer to the students, particularly, to the matrimonial property bill. Go and find out what is matrimonial property and what constitutes matrimonial property. And to our men as well, because I think all women we know now what is matrimonial what? Matrimonial property, as far as the matrimonial bill is concerned. But the men, I'm not very sure they want to know what matrimonial properties are. Six is the securing the protection of rights to property, Article 40. And this is an, a very rich area as far as the development of this country is concerned, where we are used to dispossessing others on the basis of hate. You look at somebody, you say, are you, you are short? You possibly could not have been born here. I think we need to go back to where short people are. Okay? 
Others we have dispossessed on the basis of color, race. And this really has been a problem to us. Really, it's ugly head in the name of what? Ethnic? Ethnic clashes. Based on ethnicity, culture amongst others. Article 40 guarantees that all of us have what equal rights to acquire and own property of any description and in any part of Kenya, verbatim as it is. And it also gives that one cannot just be a bit really deprived of their ownership by the state or by any other person. In the event it is the state, there has to be promptful and just compensation. We also find Article 43 again, the right to accessible and adequate housing and sanitation. For those of us within the college, architecture and engineering, this I think really helps us and our clients. Because time and again, you are not able to articulate what may be done on certain pieces of land due to these issues that are not very, very clear. Or people want to invest and they have got this mindset that one day somebody may be ejected from wherever they are. One is a liberty to acquire and protected by the constitution in any part of the country. The possibility to review titles to determine the appropriate and legality, that is, the sanctity of the title is protected unless that title was acquired in what we call illegal or illegal manner. The other policy that I may want to talk about briefly is the National Art Policy, which birthed Chapter 5 of the Constitution, and the same principles that we find at Article 60, again, are within the National Art Policy. The National Art Policy just gives a framework to address the issues that were identified as far as the problems that we discussed, and also gives prescriptions as to what should be done as far as each of the issues are concerned. It touches on matters of uh, large administration, large information management systems, historical injustices, amongst others. What is the legal framework as far as large now is concerned? That just tries to simplify it. You can see the supreme law, as far as still law is concerned, we have the constitution, the law policy, the categories of law are very clearly eliminated there, public, private, community law, the institution that will manage and administer law, the National Law Commission, and together with that, we have got the new law regimes or law laws that have been put into place. The mandate of the National Art Commission, again, you'll see it at Article 67 of our Constitution. Together with that, we have got new laws, which have repealed the old, old laws. The Land Act 2012. This is an act that allows us to deal with matters on administration and management of land in a very transparent and effective way. The Land Registration Act consolidates about four previous land laws that brought about a lot of complications as far as registration of land is concerned. And we have got the new Environment and Land Code 2012, which again has got the status of the High Court and is, is, is able to tackle, is supposed to tackle all matters touching on land and the environment. That means matters litigation about